Hello and welcome to this quick demonstration of the new features coming to Team Studio Export version 5. Today I'll walk you through a few of these updates, including the capability to export selected datasets to both CSV files for importation into other platforms, as well as things such as SharePoint lists and extracting attachments, OLE objects, or embedded images from your existing applications. For those who are not familiar with Team Studio Export, just very briefly, what the solution allows you to do is to take your older HCL Lotus Notes based applications, export them into an archive, uh, either as XML, HTML, or PDF, distribute those to your end users for them to search through the data uh, utilizing full text search capabilities within self contained hosted applications. You can base these or distribute them via platforms such as SharePoint, uh, a local file share, or things such as Apache uh, web servers. So for today's demonstration, we just happen to have just one of these sorts of applications in the form of an older address book. We have several different employees across different regions, different departments, all available via browsing the pre-configured views that we will use to target the specific data that we want to extract out of the application uh, via the new features included in the next port. The first thing that we're going to have to do is we cannot extract any data without having an archive created. So we're going to want to go to our export application, which many of you will already be familiar with. We locate the application that we would like to create the archive of. We can select the application, right click and select archive. What will happen is it will then create a DXL or XML archive of all the design, the data notes contained within the application that you can then use to either create the archives that we had already available within export to PDF and HTML versions, or we also have a new capability to export the data from that application archive so seeing as I have already created both the XML and HTML archives versions of this application, the one thing to understand, especially for those who are not familiar with the tool, is that we now have a browsable self-contained web application version of the original Notes app. And by that, I mean we can go and we can look at all the views that were contained within that application. We can go and look at, let's concentrate, for example, on the people by name view. We can go and look at all the original data notes and entries that were contained within that application. But what's important to understand is that each of these data notes is a representation of the data from the original app. And what we can do as part of the new features with the data export is that with each record that we now choose to export to either CSV or SharePoint list, we can link those back to the original data note representation in an archive. So what that allows you to do is to take the archive, host it on the web server on SharePoint uh, as an example, and then export the tables uh, either to lists or to CSV file and link that back to this original record wherever you choose to host it. So now that we have our XML archive created, uh, we also have the HTML archive that we can reference from the data set we are about to look at exporting. But let's see how we can actually go about and extract this data out of the virtual address book. In order to access the new data export features, you right click on the application that you're interested in and you simply choose export data. This will present you with all three currently available options for data extraction, which is CSV, attachments, and SharePoint lists. So each option does have some settings that are specific to each output type, but there are settings that are consistent. So the way that we configure the data and we choose the data that we want to extract is fairly similar between all three. So let's concentrate first on doing a SharePoint list as an example. In order to generate a SharePoint list from our extracted data, there are a few underlying things that we have to put in place. One of them being is we have to set up a connection to your SharePoint site. And this is fairly straightforward to do. If we look at our sites option here, what we can do is we can go, we can add any new SharePoint sites, okay? 
and each site will have its own connection document so you can have it on different tenants for example but basically you select the authentication type and to be honest most of them these days are online modern um, if the tenant is utilizing a basic authentication method, generally uh, it has to be put in place because by default uh, SharePoint now comes utilizing the modern method. But in any case, it's fairly straightforward to set up. If we look at the example I have already, is you can go, you can put in the URL to the actual SharePoint site your that's hosted in your tenant, and this is where we're going to generate uh, any list that we're going to target uh, using this connection document. Okay. Once you put in your tenant URL, you can test it, put that in place, and it then becomes an option as the target for the list. Next, we want to go and generate the, the list. So we're, of course, we're going to need to specify a name. So in this case, maybe I will just call it lab demo, which is virtual address book. We can choose whether we want to replace the list if it already exists, append to it, include any attachments. By attachments, we will strip out anything, uh, including uh, OLE objects. Okay, And those will be uploaded actually to an attachment column on the list. We can then go and look at saying, okay, well, what data do we want to select? When it comes to selecting data, as I mentioned earlier, this one is consistent across all three output options. So we can utilize a formula, okay, a selection formula to choose which data notes we would like to select for extraction. And from those data notes, we can actually customize and choose what fields we want to include. We can also select a view, okay, so the pre different pre-configured views we were going to look at earlier was, I believe, people by name. So I'll choose that as an example. And we can also do a text search. So the text search option is actually using the Lucene plugin. Um, so you can go and perform kind of pattern-based searching. And uh, it's good maybe for those uh, end users who will utilize a tool that are not notes technologists and might not understand uh, selection formulas, for example. But let's concentrate on uh, using a view, as that's probably the simplest one to demonstrate at the moment. Once you select a view, any columns uh, and values in that view are what's going to be available to select for export. Okay, So here you can see, once selecting a view, any of the, the fields that were included within that view now become available for extraction. All right, We can go and preview. Uh, 50 hits, uh, just so you can get a good idea of what that data is going to look like. And we can go and maybe customize it a little bit if we don't like what's there. So for example, you know, we might not want all the columns that are available in that view. So in this case, I might say, okay, well, ID file, I think there's some data note column maybe in here, $1.16. Yeah, so there's a data note at the end. So maybe some of these we don't want to include. What we can do is we can come back to our table and we can say, okay, well, I don't want to have the ID column, I don't want the computed column, maybe the uh, node ID I want to remove as well. And well, well, we'll leave the rest, they look pretty sensible. So we can go and build uh, a data set from these specific chosen fields and extract that to our list. Now, the other thing that I'd like to mention is earlier, I pointed out that we have an HTML archive with all the data notes contained within, and I mentioned we could link back to that. So we have a link option here that will go and take and add or append to that table the link representing that chosen data record. So if you choose, for example, default, it's going to link back to the configured HTML or PDF archive uh, that you've created. If you're hosting it on, for example, a SharePoint site, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to utilize a custom URL and you're going to paste in the URL to the index um, from the specific document library that you're going to utilize to host this archive. Okay. If the data set that you've chosen is, is correct, and you don't want to remove any more fields. Again, if you chose by formula, you'd have the option to add additional fields here as well. Okay, So you could add any field from the database, for example, uh, that you would like to extract. So once you click OK, what's going to happen is it's now just going to become like any other regular export job. It will show up in the queue and start to process. So this is now going to create a SharePoint list uh, on our site, uh, example site that we created. Okay, now I come back here, 
And we can now look back at our site contents where we're going to find our SharePoint list that should have been generated. And here we go, the VAB demo. You see we have a list of 508 items exported from that uh, application. And here we have all of the fields uh, that were contained within that view that we had chosen to export. Uh, we have all the records for all the employees, the regions and whatnot. Um, we can open those up. So these are now uh, editable. They can be referenced from other applications within the uh, Microsoft uh, Power Platform. So you know, Power Apps, you can create a Power App and deploy that to Teams, um, you know, referencing this, this list import it, utilize it within Dataverse, and so forth. But here we've got all our fields from our view. Um, we also have, uh, I believe, we should have our link, yep. So we've got our link that will go back to the original data note for this specific record, okay, that is hosted on the SharePoint document library. And we also have uh, attachment column that has uh, any attachments and oily objects that were also extracted from that data note. What I'd like to mention is that the way in which we chose the data to export, um, we also have a similar approach to the other two targets formats, which as I mentioned is both CSV and attachments. Okay. The one or the method in which we did our earlier demonstration where we chose a view, okay, and it only gave us the field within that view to export. If you happen to choose formula and you go and you click the add button, what this allows you to do is to then select from any fields, from any form within the application that you want to include within the data set versus just choosing a view with pre-configured fields on that view, right? So with this, it's a, a lot more powerful. It will allow you to grab you know, values from different forms and then extract that into your SharePoint list or CSV file as well. So just something worth noting. And now that we do have our SharePoint list, we can, as mentioned earlier, distribute that across different power platform applications, maybe into Teams. Um, fairly easy to reference uh, our list. Um, for example, if you just want to do it via Power Apps, we could use a template and link it to the source data uh, being the VAB list. So if we open up Power Platform, we can choose something like Start with Data. Of course, you can go the route of using templates and so forth. We can select external data, link that back to our SharePoint site, and then back to our VAB or Virtual Address Book list. From there, it's then just going to go out. It's going to build a very basic application in this example. But you'll see at least uh, how we could do that and reuse that information or application that originally came from Domino very quickly and distribute that to Teams, for example. And once it's complete generating the example application from your SharePoint list and its uh, columns and values, um, we can go and preview the application, what it's going to look like. You'll see that we've got all of our fields that have come over from the SharePoint list. Um, we can go and you know, check on the different records, of course. So it's brought that all over. And lastly, you know, if you wanted to deploy to something like Teams, fairly straightforward to do. Just close the preview. Save our application. Maybe we'll call it Virtual Address Book App. Come back to our home page. Here we have our virtual application has been created, and we can go and maybe do something like add that to the Teams. From that point, it's going to go out. Add that to your Teams. And if we come and look inside a Teams client, look at our apps, we see our virtual address book, and we can go look at all the values that were originally, you know, from our notes-based application. 
Thank you for your time today. There are certainly other aspects of these new features to explore, and they are fully documented on our site. Uh, you'll find them under the Exporting Data heading here um, within the Export documentation. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us uh, at contactus at teamco.com. And other than that, please have a great day. Thank you.